games are huge these days. Every AAA release is a 100GB plus download, and chances are you only have enough flash storage on your PC, laptop or handheld to keep a few installed at any one time. But what if you could share your games instantly across any device on your home network? Could hosting your games on a NAS be an answer? When Terramaster asked me to review one of their home network storage devices, I was never going to use it as advertised. Iceberg Tech is about PC gaming, so I wanted to find some sort of gaming adjacent use case for it. The model they sent is the F4425, an entry level x86 based unit with a $369 price tag for the 4 bay version or $250 for the 2 bay. It's marketed as an ultra-quiet, user-friendly NAS for home use, rather than a prosumer powerhouse. However, even for a home unit, the specs are a bit on the low side. The Celeron N5095 quad-core CPU is backed up by 4GB of DDR4 RAM, which occupies the one and only slot in the system. So that means while you can upgrade the capacity, you don't get the option for dual channel. For connectivity, again, things are very entry level. There's a single 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, three USB ports, two of which are 10 gigabit USB 3 and one 5 gigabit, and an HDMI port. On the other hand, this low spec means the whole unit only uses 22 watts of power under load and has a claimed operating volume of 21 decibels which is below the noise floor in my room most of the time, and the only sound I hear from it is from the drives themselves. As a home NAS, the F4425 is designed for archiving old photos and videos, hosting your ripped DVDs and Blu-rays, backing up your sensitive data, that sort of thing. My idea for this NAS is as a network-attached Steam game drive. Think about it all your huge game downloads in one place, accessible to your gaming PC, your laptop and your ROG Ally without having to re-download them or move them across from one drive to another. If it works, that is. Before I find out if that's an actually viable use case for a NAS, naturally I need some NAS drives. And that's where Scan Computers have come in clutch, providing a pair of Seagate Ironwall 4TB units for this project. In the wider world of general use storage media, solid state may have come to replace spinning disks, but one area where HDD still rules supreme is cool names. Seriously, Ironwolf, Skyhawk, Raptor, Velociraptor, Spinpoint? Okay, I think Samsung might have farmed that one out to their washing machine people, but you get the idea. I'd rather spend money on an Iron Wolf than a model number Pro Evo. That's all I'm saying. Also, this particular series of drives is optimised for longevity and low power operation, and also comes with Seagate Rescue, a data recovery service that can help retrieve your data in the event of accidental, mechanical or natural disaster, just in case the unthinkable happens. Thanks again to Scan Computers for continuing to support the channel. If you're in the UK, check out their Seagate Ironwolf range at the link below. The Iron Wolf drives click into the Terramaster's plastic sleds fairly easily, no tools required, and slide into place with no fuss. Though empty sleds can easily be slotted in at the wrong angle and look like a bookshelf that's falling over. Setup beyond this is done mostly using the Terramaster operating system, accessed from another system on the network via the Terramaster desktop app or mobile app or a web browser. From here you can set up a user account and password, directly upload or download files using the file manager, and install apps for services like Plex and Jellyfin. Alternatively, you can simply access the NAS from the file browser on any Windows machine on your local network, and that's how we're going to be gaming on it. I went into the Steam menu, hit settings and went down to the storage tab, added the shared folder as a new drive and then disappeared down a rabbit hole for two days as I realised for the first time in years just how ancient and out of date my network hardware is. 
so, a, a brief tangent. I knew coming into this review that my network hardware was going to be a problem. I live in a flat that can only get internet speeds up to about 63 megabits, and I don't normally network any of my devices to each other, so I haven't been paying attention to how old and slow it was. Connecting the F4425 to the network was eye-opening to say the least. The allegedly 1200 megabit powerline kit I was using for connecting my work PC to the internet turns out to be actually more like 180 megabits. The Wi-Fi can stretch to about 600 but is far less consistent, so for actually testing the NAS I ended up connecting it directly to the PC over the supplied CAT6 cable, skipping my awful infrastructure entirely. Anyway, with all that out of the way, uh, the scope of this video rapidly degraded from how well will this perform to will it even work? The first game I tested was Jedi Survivor, which was a notoriously bad PC port, and patches haven't fully fixed it even today. However, trying to run it from the NAS turned out to be impossible. Every time I clicked the play button, Steam needed to validate the files, a process it said would take 22 minutes. 22 minutes later, the files were validated, but the game didn't start. Hitting play again, and again, the game needs to validate the files. Every. Single. Time. I lost count of how many times I tried to launch Jedi Survivor from the NAS after this, with it never actually successfully getting past this validation step. Turns out this is probably an EA thing, as I've seen others have the same issue with Battlefield games. Not sure how to fix it, I just gave up on Jedi Survivor and moved on to the next game. Loading into Indiana Jones was a significantly better experience. Which, now that I say it, that I guess isn't saying much, but honestly this was probably the best result I had. The game took a little longer than usual to load, and wandering through the jungle and the beginning of the Vatican level saw the occasional stutter and some textures took a moment to load in fully, but on the whole this was completely playable. I could imagine someone being able to enjoy this on a handheld and barely notice an issue. Expedition 33 had a moment at the start of the game whereby everything was triangles, but beyond that it was pretty much smooth sailing. I can imagine this being a problem in later, more complex parts of the game though. Elden Ring was unfortunately a no-go, it wouldn't even start, giving some heavy rain error message before quitting out. I tried manually verifying the files, but uh, yeah, to no avail. Ratchet and Clank also failed to start, but uh, in a weird way. The settings app loaded with placeholder text instead of the actual settings names, um, and yeah, just refused to start. Now, with a 2 out of 5 hit rate and less than perfect experiences in the games that did work, I'm inclined to call this experiment a failure. That being said, I think there is still a place for a NAS in your gaming setup, though perhaps in a less direct, more convoluted way. If you have anything less than gigabit internet, or you have download limits to contend with, you could find it quicker to move a game from your NAS to your internal storage than re-downloading it. Of course, if the reason you need more storage is that you don't have enough room on your main PC, that does mean you'll have to be moving games the other direction as well, so... Um, it's a fair bit less convenient than just clicking play, but uh, at least it'll work. Of course, if I knew more about networking, I'd have been aware of two other solutions that are much more likely to work, or at least partially work. The first being setting up the NAS as an iSCSI drive, which I'm Jeff talks about in a craft computing video linked below. This isn't a complete solution to the problem I've created here, however, TOS 6 does offer an iSCSI app, so you could potentially try it out as an extension to your gaming PC storage space without having to switch to an operating system like TrueNAS. The other solution, which is a bit over my head, is to set up the NAS as a Steam cache server, which I gather uses the NAS to store the files you'd normally download from Steam servers, meaning that the bottleneck to installing games should be your local network's performance, not your internet. 
Terra Masters OS has Docker support, so I believe it should be possible to set up on a NAS like this one, but the guide on LANcache.net talks about using SSDs as a cache for the hard drives, so it might be that this would be better used with one of the higher end NAS models like the 424 Max. Returning to the Terramaster F4425 for a moment, I have to say, as someone who's not a particularly demanding user, this is probably all I'd need from network storage. The operating system has Jellyfin and Plex support, and can have various other apps installed which I'm sure do all kinds of useful things that I know nothing about. When I'm benchmarking games, I'm always going to transfer them to a local SSD first rather than let the network be a bottleneck. In fact, this whole review may have convinced me to upgrade my network hardware, as trying to access stuff over Powerline is clearly untenable. That aside, I don't think I'd need any more than this. Then again, a higher performing NAS with SSDs for drive caching would most likely have minimised some of the stutter and asset loading issues I saw when trying to run games directly off the NAS. So if you weren't put off by the low hit rate and want to try this out for yourself, I'd still recommend looking at the higher end models instead. Thanks again to Scan Computers for helping to make the review possible. Kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.